How's it going ladies and bruises, I'm Bobby Sixkill and welcome back to the Shapeshifting Detective. We got a little bit into this next chapter when we talked to Alice Munro, and it turns out that Alice and, and uh, Dorota were a thing and Alice is the next one on the hit list. We got to talk to everybody still, with everybody. We got, we got a lot to do in this chapter. Let's go talk to Zack, the creepy weirdo. Do you know Alice Munro? Munro. Everyone knows her. She's a local radio star here. Do you have photos of her? I always get the shot, Sam. One way or another. Why do you keep being creepy like that? Stop doing that! You just want me you to be suspicious of you? Yeah. Let's go talk to Oscar. He's not here. Alright. How do you been Chief. <sighs> Sam. Do me a favor. Go easy on Violet. If we need to get anything out of her, let me deal with it. She'll open up to me. Okay, fine. Mate, everything that fine. occurred after he copied the notes you know, must I'll have been some you. kind of hallucination, he concluded. Possibly caused by a girl. There's a little girl again. Excellent work. Gold star for you. <laughs> oh, hello. This is my goddaughter, Sophia. She's only nine, and she's a maths genius. Hello. <laughs> I have to pop to my room to get something. Be nice to her while I'm gone. Otherwise, I might have to smother you in your sleep. I'm always nice. What's your name? Right now? Sam, I think. I'm Sophia. Pleased to meet you. Do you want to know a secret? Yeah, more than anything. Violet was taken by aliens in their ship. She doesn't want anyone to know. Sorry about that. Sophia, your mother will be here for you soon, so run along and wait. <laughs> now, Sam, how can I help you? Do you know Alice Munro? Of course. Poe and Munro. She's on the radio. <laughs> Have you ever met her? Yes, I believe I did. She was here once for something. I don't remember now. Sophia mentioned aliens? She has a wicked imagination for her age. <sighs> <laughs> Is that why you're taking pills? I was seeing and hearing things that weren't there. That's why I'm taking pills. Have you told anyone else about this? I needed to confide in someone, so I told Chief Dupont. Just Chief Dupont. And now you, apparently. You think you were abducted last night? Why are you talking about this again? You understand, every time you mention abduction, it opens up a vault of crushing memories that I'd rather stay locked up. Did anyone else see you last night? No. Not even the moon. The chief said you'd tell me about the abduction. <sighs> I don't really want to. About a month ago, the guest house was empty and I was alone in my bedroom. All I could hear was dripping. A cold tap. That's why she freaked out about the dripping. Drip. Drip. And then it began. I could smell iron. A strong, metallic smell. Then I could taste it. On my tongue. And then weightlessness. Like time and space had stopped. That was the first time they took me. First time? It's happened five times. Even on Clozapine. Get that strange aura, then I'm gone. I tests for epilepsy, amongst other things. But all the scans were normal. You forget everything? No. I have certain... flashbacks. 
I really need details about the abduction. It's difficult to explain. I'm stuck in the wall of an enormous room made from these wooden vines, except the vines slowly move and drip with pain. My head is pushed out like I'm a trophy. If I look to my side, there are others, heads, all prisoners, being experimented on. Experimented on? They rearrange us like decorations. Suck us backwards into the darkness and then thrust us back through the wall. And when they return me home, I'm broken. Cuts. Bruises. Memories. Represent potential. Oh my god, they're going to teens really fast. About Let's go talk to Bronwyn. Tell me about Ellis Monroe. I've heard on the radio, but other than that, I don't know anything about her. I want to help them. What's the connection between Ellis and Dorota? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? We know that. Although we can be sure of one thing. They both know the killer? Mm. Not necessarily. If it's a traveller, then they just jump into any vessel, have their fun and go. It just needs to be someone nearby. Rain said you knew about rights. A little bit. What did you want to know? Everything. What is a right? A right can take many forms, but from what we know about these travellers, it seems to be performing some kind of coming of age ceremony. Coming of age? Yes. A rite of passage. A running havoc in our dimension is rewarded in theirs. Not fair, is it? Why were there three victims before? Will there be three this time? Three attempts? Yes. That's likely. But three victims? That's up to you, Sam. No pressure. Yeah, thanks. I can't say that one. Do you know Zach Weston? No. I can do a reading if you want. Okay, fine. If you think it'll help. Hmm. A chariot. Is Zach a suspect? I'm sensing there's a lot of tension pent up frustration like he's trying to keep everything together and if he can just do that I'm sorry that's not much help to you is it not really I need your help yes of course anything try to find out more from Mercury I guess I've already been doing that but sure I'll keep at it maybe it'll feel sorry for me and finally put out can't say the coin thing. That's the one wooden. thing we're keeping to ourselves. Yes. And Rain. Tell me more about Birmingham. In Birmingham, it was a man called Yuri Harris. He worked as a butcher. He beheaded all three girls within hours of each other. And we couldn't stop it. He pleaded not guilty for reason of temporary insanity. What happened to Yuri? The Butcher of Birmingham received three life sentences and won't be seeing the light of day anytime soon. We know it wasn't him, though. We know it was a traveller. Do you know Alice Munro? I know the name. She's off the radio. Hard to get away from it in this town. But, I can um, turn it off if you want. If that'll help. So what's the news about Ellis? I feel so useless sitting here. I want to help. Do you really want to help? Yes, please use me. Tell me what to do. I have a few options. Find out where you came from the Ouija board. You got it. Me and the spirit world are going to have a serious chat. I'll get back to you when I find something. 
Yeah, we're using everybody to their to their it's abilities. It's a blue steel dumpster. We need to switch the people again. The dream. You're only alive because we want you to be. Who am I talking to right now? We got a lot of people to be now. Hi, I. <clears throat> Hi. Hi, I'm Chief Dupont. Yes, you are. Let's go talk to some people. Starting with Violet. Between us, we slept in ship. Claude. Nothing. That spring, we lucked out with a broken fire. Chief, what a surprise to see you. Again. Why didn't you tell me Ellis was next? I told you Dorota was first. And that didn't turn out very well, did it? Let's You're hope Sam does a better job than you did. Some scandal involving You're a woman. Like, so calm down. I guess that's how Wisdom, though. Of that I have no doubt. Lexi? Okay, nobody. Nobody taught here. Me how the universe worked. I close my eyes as the concrete. Oscar. Chief, I wanted to ask you something. Uh, is it about the boudoir photos? Yeah. So it's true then? I haven't seen them. I'm sorry. I'm just in shock. All the time. How, how could she be so different? I just can't process it all. I need to talk to you with, uh, What did you want to Sam? ask? Am I still a suspect? Yeah. But I was playing football, and there was loads of witnesses. How? Everyone is a suspect. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I arrived to a cacophony of... You're definitely a suspect, you creepy bastard. Chief DuPont. Thanks for calling in. I'm just checking your safe. At the moment, my heart's beating a thousand times a minute and I can't sit still. Every noise or knock on the door makes me jump out of my skin and I keep looking behind me. Is that safe? Have yes. I ever let you down? Still alive. What's really worrying you? That you're just saying you're doing things when you're not actually doing anything. What's the plan, Chief Dupont? How do we stop this from happening? How do we stop me from dying? Good question. Metal handle. And we obviously and don't have an got answer for a it. Move it to the guest house. Face. Um, she and needs what guards like watching her. All right, changing up. Hello, I'm Violet. I'm Violet. Europe? No. Work our way through everybody again. It's a lot faster with everybody else because there's less people to talk to. There's nobody around here at the moment. Jesus. Mexico? The place is abandoned. No. Straight up, literally abandoned. I can't handle Queen this radio anymore. Can we turn it off now? It's driving me up the bloody wall, I tell you. Hello, lovely. Take a look at this. It's a picture of Dorota. I don't want to see pictures of your conquests. It's not like that. It's just a press photo. Do you see anything in it? What do you see? A beautiful lady. I can make you look like that, Violet. You just need to let me. What does he keep seeing in that picture? That he's not letting on? I need to know. <laughs> he's seeing something. But he's not telling me. Alright, no, we need to change up. Hi. I'm Bronwyn. I'm Bronwyn. You are brown one. Let's go. Let's start with Violet. Do you believe Tara can predict things now? I'm not one for mystics and crystal balls. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> what? It says you're lying about your alibi. It says you're lying. Oh, I suppose it has a 50-50 chance of getting it right. I'm not up for mystic things, I'm a Virgo. Does she realise that that is a fucking... 
That is like completely self contradictory. What, what a day! Ellis Munro, then. Looks like our traveller likes redheads. I wouldn't be so sure. Maybe we should be worried about uh, Violet then. Well, what then? Just young women in general? No. I think it's definitely looking for redheads. You could be looking for people who slept with what's your face. Ron, what are we going to do about Ellis? What would you do about Ellis? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Let's think. What have we tried before? A few times we've caught up with the traveller, nothing's worked. Talking to them? Killing them? Restraining them? If we lock up the killer until Mercury tells us Ellis is safe, that could work. But who is the killer? Ellis. Chief to Paul. Sam. Austin. I don't know. Zach. I think so too. I need a reason to visit him though. Zach's the most obvious one. Because he's super crazy. Creepy. And crazy ish. Who are or you? Oscar. What are you doing in my house? Get out now before I call the police! Well, that didn't go well. Could have explained ourselves. But no, we're just gonna walk into their house without knocking and then get kicked out. Cool. Whatever. That's totally normal. Let's switch again. It's time for rain. Hello, I'm Rain. I'm Rain, I'm Rain. I feel like we're not finding out much at the moment. Hi. Who is... You saw her, did you? She's my goddaughter. At that age where she overshares. <laughs> is she a ghost? What? Is she... What makes you say that, Rain? Is there something about her aura? A ghost? I thought she was just a girl. You creep me what out is now. It, Ray? You creep me I have out. A plan. You do. Enlighten me. Love to. Maybe Ellis should stay with us. Maybe Ellis should stay with Chief Dupont. Maybe Ellis should stay with us. With our track record. If she gets killed anywhere near us, we'll be sent to jail, whether we did it or not. Make sure she doesn't cool. get killed, then. I'm just being practical. Ellis's fate is in our hands. Ours isn't. Hmm. Hi, Rain. Did you miss me while I was gone? Where were you? So, Ellis Munro. I'm honestly not going to try and worry about this one. We've told Sam, and I think that's all we can do. Really? Well, what's Sam going to do? I believe Sam is going to save Ellis. According to the Ouija, this could play out in a lot of different ways, but mostly saving Ellis. What other ways? Ellis could run, Ellis could die, Ellis could be saved, mistaken identity, someone else dies. There's a lot of noise coming from the beyond, but it's not just a load of voices saying Ellis will die. Sam's got this. So, it could go either way. Sweet. That's, that's reasonably, uh, reasonably, I don't know. I don't know. Hopeful, I guess. Will we get in trouble if we go see Alice Haven't again? you done enough predicting my death? I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just kidding. I know it's not your fault. Well, unless you're the killer. Have you made a decision about the show? I think it's a no. Sorry. It's just the reading that you gave me the other day. I don't want to scare off the audience. Why would I scare off your listeners? What reading? 
the reading you gave me to show me what you could do. It was scarily accurate. What was accurate about it? Everything. My broken heart, the enveloping darkness, my beautiful death. You said it was just a metaphor, that it was just about transformation, but it's not. I'm going to die, aren't I? We're gonna try and stop you from dying, but at this stage, I guess. All right, we need to change people again. Uh, Lexi, you're up next. Hi, I'm Lexi. Oh, um, <clears throat> I'm Lexi. Good. Hey, Violet. Nothing. Fair enough. Fair enough. Wrong one. Lexi Corn, how thin are these walls? What do you mean the walls are thin? I can hear you screaming at your Ouija board. Last night too. I feel like I've heard your whole life story. What did you hear? Does Sam like me? Is Violet a lesbian? Will Ellis die? Will Bromwen die? That last one, don't worry about that. Why not? I'm gonna stick around until you're sick of the sight of me, all right? I'm not in any danger. Ellis is in danger. Sam's in danger. <laughs> Oops, I already did that one. My bad. I guess you rain. Our job is so stressful. Tell me about it. Chasing around the unknown, trying to triumph good over evil, generally standing around helpless watching people die. Why do we do it? For me, it's a common decency thing. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. Did you know the Earth was overrun by trans-dimensional evil? Want to help fix it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> trans- I'll read the manual, Lex. People are afraid of ghosts, zombies, and aliens. They never even think to consider the possibility that there are millions of universes, potentially with millions of predators, all far more evolved than we are. What are our chances of victory? Minuscule. But if we don't fight at all, zero. Good point. I like the way this guy thinks. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Actually, I think all the Taro people were good people, to be honest. They all seem pretty good to me. Sorry, we're closed. The creepiest Unless ones are Zack and Violet. I'm a friend of Dorota's. Dorota? I'm sorry about what happened. Dorota told me things about you. Can I come in? Uh, it's a bit late, but I think I could spare a few minutes. Sorry, yeah. I didn't. Catch so your creepy. Name. Lex. Lexi. I like it. It's got an edge. Dorota says she knew you. You're dating Violet, aren't you? No, we're just friends. That's not what you told Sam. That's not what Violet thinks. Violet doesn't always see things clearly. It's fine. I know how to handle her. Doesn't see what clearly? What you know, some women, they think a bunch of flowers means a relationship. Anyway, <laughs> why are we talking about Violet? Let's talk about you. Okay. Dorota. Yeah, she had a portrait session with me. Can I get you a drink? No, thanks. That sounds dodgy. I'm going to say date rape. No. I know what you did to Dorota. I didn't do anything to Dorota. You killed her. You seduced her. 
You make it sound so sordid. Dorota didn't do anything she didn't want to. Interesting. Interesting. Cool. All right, we need to change people again. That was some good information we got there, though, I think. He does let his guard down around, around women, so that's quite handy. We know how to deal with him. We're going to be Alice Hi, for a bit. Hi, I'm Alice. There's a long chapter. We've got a lot I'm of people Alice. to deal with now. A lot of people to be and a lot of people to talk to. No Violet. Nobody's here, that's a shame. Somebody's got to protect Alice. Maybe if we are Alice, then they'll come for us instead of her. Except we might be the killer, so who knows. Because we're obviously a trans-dimensional being ourselves. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to shapeshift and stuff. Well, we got nobody to talk to with, uh... Alice. So that's Alice done. Moving on. Let's switch to Zack. Captain Creepy. I'm Zack Weston. Just sharpening my powers of persuasion. Back to Violet. I need to... I need to talk about Ellis Monroe. What have you been doing with Ellis Monroe? What haven't I been doing? What have you heard? The tarot readers have predicted that she is the next victim. Do you think we should do something? Want to fool around? Is that really all you think about? Yes. Starting to look like August has a serial killer targeting redheads. Look at my hair, Zack. Does this look red to you? I think we should break up. I don't think we should say that. She go off the deep end. She's already schizophrenic, right? She already might be crazy as it is. Like, dangerous. She seems to have a serious jealous streak. Which could be a problem. Let's Zach, see what we can find out. What are you doing here? They do know each other. I've been a naughty boy. I need to tell my previous partners. Good to know. I'm not one of them though, so... Unless there's anything else? Pose for me. Pose for me. Zach, please stop asking. It's not gonna happen. Just, uh... Just, uh... Do a few. So creepy. Are you bullying me into taking my clothes off for you? That's sleazy. Just leave, Zach, before I call Chief DuPont. So that's something Zach does a lot then. Cool. He's such a great guy. Did we beat Lexi? I think we were, we were already Lexi, right? We just got Oscar to go. And then we'll go back to Sam. I'm Oscar. Oscar. Is there anything else I can do? Definitely need to do that too. Return to Sam, talk to Oscar, tell him where the boudoir pictures were for, so he doesn't have to grieve anymore. It's fair that he doesn't want to have to grieve if he doesn't have to. We should totally help him out with that. Unless he already knew, and that's, and he killed her. I mean, that's a thing that could be a thing as well, you know. Definitely could be a thing. I don't know. I haven't really discovered anything Oscar, drastically new. I'm so sorry. What can I do? Pose for me. <laughs> Oscar. It's so much more complicated than that. Sounds like a Why yes to me. Save her? Is it really? Tell me. Oscar, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. That's not who I am. I go out of my way to help people. To be kind to them. 
So were you helping or being kind? I had feelings for her, Oscar. You should understand that. I'm sorry this is how you had to hear it. But maybe she didn't tell you because she was leaving me. I don't know. I'm sorry. I truly am. I forgive you. You want to make it up to me? What the fuck? I forgive you. You want to make it up? How? Maybe if I knew what Dorota saw in you, it'd help. No. Leave. Too creepy. Oscar, good. You got my message. Got some things to show you. Hook me up, Doc. What have you got? Does, um, this mean anything to you? Why does everyone keep pointing at this particular Dorota. picture? And what if I showed you this? Alice Munro. Do you know her? She's from the radio. And if I do this? <laughs> what the no. fuck? Anything? <laughs> what are you doing? Really? Really? Thanks, man. That'll be all. You can go now. Oh, wow. Subtle. <laughs> okay, okay. We're gonna switch back to Sam. We're gonna talk to Oscar. I guess we'll just go through everyone and see if there's anything new to say to anyone. Uh, we'll wrap the episode up and we'll start the next chapter in the next one. I don't know if there'll be anything to say to anyone. Probably not. It usually isn't when we come through again. It's always worth a look though, isn't it? You can't say anything about the coin, you clown. God. You did a reading for Alice Munro? Yeah. She asked for a sample reading to show what I could do. <laughs> and was she suitably impressed? Did your reading predict any danger? Not really. As I recall, it was all fluffy bunnies and rainbows. Success and riches on all fronts, etc, etc. Then how would she say it's scarily accurate? Nothing new with you, Lexi? Uh, we'll take the cab. It's nine o'clock and you're listening to Radio August. Investigations into the murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw are continuing this evening. Miss Shaw was found dead in her home at approximately 10 p.m. last night in what police are describing as a puzzling case. Residents are urged to be cautious until the perpetrator is caught. I cannot stress this enough, August. Stay safe out there. You mean the world to me. In other news, Monroe has been detained on urgent business, so you're stuck with me until she returns. Never fear, Monroe fans. We still have lots of pre-recordings, so you can relax with her angelic tones. That's nine o'clock with Poe and Monroe. Yeah, before we go back, let's talk to Oscar. He's not there. We're not talking to Oscar. Hey, Chief. Violet's talking about aliens. What do you know about it? Have you looked into it? Yeah, I, I pulled in a few bug-eyed aliens, but they wouldn't confess. Bastards. I've got a murder to solve. Can we talk about this later? Hmm, you kind of shrug that off like it's not important. I don't like that. It's clearly important. Zach? I don't know what I can do for you, Alice, but uh, good luck. Alright, we're going to wrap this episode up here, and then... In the next one, we'll start the next chapter. Until then, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next episode.